You're probably relieved to see you'll keep most of your hair. What is the meaning of life? It's a question I'd ask if my bills weren't so high. There's a moment in Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 1 that really touched me. Amazo is a robot created by Dr. Ivo for the purpose of draining power from metahumans in order to redistribute them to the powerless, all in service to prolong human life because its own creator has accelerated aging. I wanted to extend my own life. You cannot give life. Only take. But then Lex tricked Amazo to beat the Justice League, which is very eerily similar to a certain other story. Anyways, Lex is also the one behind Ivo's condition, and Ivo himself wants the fighting to stop. So he tells Amazo to fulfill his function. The transference of power doesn't work. It was never gonna work. That is an unacceptable outcome. Everything functioned within expected parameters. So distraught, Amazo shuts itself down. Something, something, something changing your mind. Something, something, something. This film is about a lot of things. I mean, literally, the film takes place in like four points in time. There's Barry's perspective of the League forming from concept to recruitment to announcement. And I suppose you'd like to perhaps reveal the name of this exciting first ever super team. Which is also where Amazo is featured. Then there's Barry's ongoing life with Iris, including his wedding. Then Barry stranded with the crime syndicate as the antimatter wave destroys everything. And finally, Barry assembled alongside the other multiversal heroes in order to solve this predicament. Each knowledgeable about exoterran technology, this is a think tank. Yeah, there's a lot of Barry, and unfortunately, he never goes. <laughs> this is ultimately his film. He is a confused traveler, constantly pulled out of one moment, then placed in another. The flowers. In which there's three really smart storytelling purposes. First, it coheres with the entire Tomorrowverse line of films into one big, consistent experience. These films have always been very abrupt in terms of how one film followed the other. We had an entire film dedicated to Superman's introduction, but not for the Flash when he appears and has his own story. Then all of a sudden, how Jordan's time as a League member is completely off screen before making him a really big deal in Jon Stewart's film. The universe was always skipping over huge chunks of time, moments which arguably probably would have been kind of redundant to see because we've seen them adapted so many times, but unavoidably it made the viewing experience pretty abrupt. But now that's kind of become the point. We were experiencing the universe like the Flash, always jumping, never totally present, waking up at a new point in time. Once we knew they were gonna, we had three crisis movies and we basically knew we had 10 movies total and a, and a couple shorts, we just kind of worked backwards from who do we have to meet and when do we have to meet them, yeah. so. Anyways, the second storytelling purpose is to create a sense of scale. We see the disaster from the position of the damned, those trying to comprehend it, and life before it. Therefore, thirdly, by uniting all these views under one character's experience, a sense of intimacy is fostered. Alongside the Flash, we see how insignificant everyone are, but also why life is so precious. No, I won't let you go. Daydreams are private imaginative universes that happen between actions. They escape rationality and calculability, while also can often govern our lives, because daydreams are where we build our expectations. Obviously, daydreams are imaginative, and this film hasn't been revealed to be a dream just yet, but I'm featuring this definition because the idea that the moments between actions, important actions, is what truly matters is kind of the message of the story. When the end is coming and it can't be stopped, the worst thing to feel is having a life that's not fully lived. At the multiverse gathering, Batman meets a grown-up Dick Grayson for the first time because in the Tomorrowverse, he actually never adopted him. On my Earth, you took me in after my parents' murder. Trained me. I became your partner. Well, you should make time. It'd be good for him, good for the mission. I... that seems terribly irresponsible. But most of all, it'd be good for you. I didn't come here for a lecture. We helped a lot of people. He also meets his and Selena's daughter too. Is Selena Kyle your... All this life he missed from just not following those private moments filled with surprising possibilities during the breaks of his missions. Subsequently, the multiverse is surprisingly not a branding gimmick or a cameo thing in this film. 
it's actually all designed to be one setting. I always find it really weird that JSA World War II's big twist was that Barry didn't go back in time, but to a parallel world. Then War World carried over that Wonder Woman instead of introducing one exclusive to the main Tomorrowverse. But the point was, there's no single one whole universe containing everything. Instead, by sharing these characters and relationships across universal borders, these worlds cease to be disposable. They become neighbors. It's all one setting. The daydreams become pieces, which only makes it more tragic that Constantine from the old DC anime movie universe is punished to see them die forever just for initiating the flashpoint back in the day. It is the universe that demands restitution. The universe is a living thing. The wonders within exist for all of us. I walk all worlds that are doomed to die. My punishment. But Barry has a slightly kinder fate. The film opens as you do with him travelling across the speed force, but what's important isn't the whys, but the stops. The first is Barry after the accident, hungry from the new metabolism and discovering his powers from catching his order. <gasps> what? These two dogs can't help but to attend to each other's needs while living constantly moving lives. Doesn't matter. Today's my last day. A moment that's accurate throughout the story when we regularly snap to elderly Barry and Iris still together, working every day. She still makes him the same food, in fact, on their anniversary. Sausage and peas, french fries, white toast, apple pie, and coffee. I thought you were crazy. Oh, I think I was too. And today's the anniversary of that day. How many years? Oh, who knows. But it was the best day of my life. Oh, mine too, honey. How everything turned out. No regrets. But Barry can see the end coming. And that's where he has to carry in all these moments. It always happens the day we get married. Something major. Well, what do we do about it? Just as society World War II had a mantra. Tomorrow is not guaranteed, only today. And this mentality was what pushed Barry into proposing himself. Little did we know it would actually become the central message that unify the entire Tomorrowverse. It's the thing which separates Barry from Bruce. He took these moments where he could live, and live them out. You were late for every dinner, every movie, but you were always right on time when I needed you. That's our anniversary. Not exactly. When the heroes were too late building the vibrational towers that would put their realities in a different frequency than the antimatter wave, Barry was actually able to create the time needed to make it. Because he just held on to Iris. He created a pocket of time for them. And they finished everything together. With the help of Amazo, too. Before we go, Barry? Yes, Amazo. Thank you for helping me achieve my primary function. But you have already paid a heavy price for being unmoored in time. Well, I'm ready for whatever. Not a lot of people know this, but my father pastored the smallest church in Mchunga province, Zambezi. The speed force still claims you its own. No church jet, or church bus, or church walls, for that matter. Just the most precious resource of all. People. Well, I only half remember it, but it always happens the day we get married. Something major. Well, what do we do about it? I never saw my father happier than when he was uniting people together like this. I'm not sure, but it's all going to be fine. We're going to spend our lives together. It will grant your farewells before the end comes. Grow old together. I promise. You can't promise that, Barry. I can. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Harbinger, I got a proposition for you. Old age. I was heartbroken for a long time. And Diana? What does that mean? Sometimes losing loved ones gives people something in common. Someday she'll lose me too. We're not immortal. This is it. There's nothing we can do. We just watch the world end? She is. To lose everyone, again and again. I tried to anticipate every possible outcome. How does that make me any different than Luthor? Is it as bad as it looks? Yes. I run. Run to her. Just want to say... Dad... 
Bruce. It's okay. But you were right in thinking that the end is close. Wrath, huh? Guess I'm in trouble. So this was the Crisis on Infinite Earths video. This should have come out back in January, but I didn't really have time to finish it until now. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I quite enjoyed it. Anyway, special thanks to everyone on Patreon. I, I don't know if the audience has the impression that we just started making movies and then said, oh, you know what, let's do Crisis. It was absolutely all mm -hmm. 10 movies are essentially one long 10 movie story that is Crisis. And we had to.